Hello, hello. Guten Tag. How's it going? Last um, few days in Berlin. Yeah, it's our last writing session while I'm in Berlin and you're in LA. It's exciting. Isn't it? Exciting for me. Get to sleep in a little bit. Yeah, you don't have to wake up at 7.30 a.m. anymore. And then I have to be in LA. So the only upside for me is I get to see my son. Um, that would be nice. While I'm under house arrest. Uh, okay. Um, well, I like your Oktoberfest um, flags behind you. Thank you very much. I threw my boyfriend a, a quarantine birthday party complete with Oktoberfest theme. And then our walls are a little too blank in the apartment right now. So we just decided to leave them up for a few more days. Ah, uh, but is it October? No. <laughs> it's Oktoberfest in July. Who says you can't just bring Oktoberfest in, into, or it was in July, now it's August. Right. Well, that makes sense, I guess. Um, okay, so that's good. Did you have a lot of beer? You know, just a little bit. <laughs> It'd be wrong if it was Oktoberfest and we didn't, right? You're so, like masters of science the way you don't party hard like a real German. Yeah, well, I got to go to Berlin, experience the real thing, then I can come back and recreate it at home. Yep. Well, hopefully you'll come here if we do the book launch here. I'm eating an apple today, not the marzipan cookies from yesterday. Wow. Healthy choices. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, I'll share a screen since I forgot for a while yesterday. Um, I, ooh, there's my apartment, uh, I'm renting, let's see, uh, I reviewed our progress <laughs> from yesterday. And what's the verdict? That, uh, that it's good that I'm, uh, I feel like, um, you know, once again, we deleted, it's like almost rewriting the entire chapter. <laughs> um, so I worry if people are going to think, oh, is your first edition that bad that you're, you rewrote it so much? No, uh, I think it's, there's enough of a time difference that I think people appreciate I mean definitely like chapter eight is like a big deal that we're we're talking about online stuff you know I feel like that's very timely I don't think people expect that I mean if it was exactly the same there'd be no point in buying the second edition you know yeah you would just get the first edition from some reseller for a few dollars that's selling it used <laughs> yeah yeah, and I, I don't think people are going to dork out so much that they're going to, like, compare. But I guess we'll see. Um, I'm still glad it's not, like, a new book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a different title, um, but an update to uh, the existing book um, or a major uh, facelift. So uh, I think I'm trying to remember where... Did we decide that we were going to just kind of read through what we have and then clean it up? And then if we got that done, work on the mobility Yeah, piece? I think there's a lot of pieces in the intro where we said, insert something here, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so we need to fill those in. Okay. But we can like read through it and fill those as we go. Okay. Um, do we even have an intro? Mm. Depends on your definition of intro. I mean, other than the anecdote, uh, if you want to be a closer, what do you think? We clean up what we have and then we come back and write the, the, the opening paragraph is what you read before it goes into the personal anecdote. Right. So why don't we clean this up and then we'll go visit, like hack this uh, paragraph down 
yeah, let's, let's revisit what we did right so that we can introduce what we did right. Yeah, that should make sense. Okay. And then um, if we have to write an intro, then the one of the editors at O'Reilly or Sarah will say, where's your intro? Um, so how would I, you want me to read it? Sure. Doesn't we can, we like can switch stuff. off whatever you want to do. Doesn't seem like we have that much stuff. <laughs> For three hours, we have like two paragraphs, but I guess it was getting to that point. It was getting okay. that funnel in there. That was a, it was a journey. It, it was a journey. It was a journey map through funnels. Okay, so I'll just start. Fun with funnels. A funnel is a cone-shaped utensil with a tube at the apex for conducting liquid or another substance through a small opening. I don't know why it says conducting, but when I put oil into my car's engine, I use a funnel to increase the success rate that oil will make it directly to where it's supposed to go. The funnel is the mechanism I use to avoid waste. All right, so that means if we're going to keep that in there, uh, we need to talk about waste at some point. Um, because the metaphor here is that may waste is uh, like churn. Is that you want more than what we have in the next paragraph where we're saying in the e-commerce world, waste happens when potential customers aren't funneled into the engine of a product? Yeah, that, I don't actually. Thanks for reading on. Okay. <laughs> I should have done that. Okay. It was just such a good idea that you already wrote it. <laughs> yeah. In the e-commerce world, waste happens when potential customers aren't funneled into the engine of a product. Somewhere along the way, the customers did not sign up, activate their accounts, initiate complete, or some other reason. In other terms, the customer did not experience the value prop correctly. Correctly or fully? Fully. And might have clicked away without satisfying his needs. Uh, it's not being sexist. This goes back and forth throughout the book with the his and her. Okay. Uh, the design of the e-commerce or digital product funnel didn't convert him into an engaged customer. Okay. Uh, so we're using engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder just to go what if just food for thought when we get down here, it might be okay. What are you I, thinking? I, 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 I'm going to put a comment that I don't know if we're trying to, if, if engaged is the, is the right word still. Cause it could be, um, something else yeah like an active customer but i don't know okay okay so funnels have been used as metaphors for customer engagement oh there it is again very engaged customers since the ad agency executive Elias St. Elmo Lewis first used the term funnel marketing in 1898. He broke down the customer journey into distinct cognitive stages. Awareness, interest, desire, and action. Okay, it's commonly known today by the acronym AIDA. Can I say this funnel? Well, we haven't, I guess, yeah, because we said he used the term marketing funnel, broke it down into stages. It's either the funnel or the stages are commonly known by this acronym. But I guess the stages are part of the funnel, so yeah, I think that would work. I think it's called the Ada funnel. Mm -hmm. Should I say his funnel or this funnel? 
this funnel. Is commonly known today by the acronym AIDA. This stage process is summarized below. Um, okay. Uh, awareness, the customer's awareness of the existence of a product or service, grabbing the reader's attention to make sure they continue to read on. So this is where we have like a bunch of different definitions that we probably need to edit together. Can I change this to users? Yep. Um, to make sure they continue to read on, scroll on, tap yeah. on. I want to use something else because that feels very specific to the interface. Um, do we want to try to use the word aware or do we want to avoid using the word aware because defining the word aware with aware is weird. Because we, we have some definitions like the customer is aware of the existence of a product or service. Isn't it that they're made aware? Yeah. Are we writing this from the perspective of like the customer? We say like the customer is this in this stage or are we writing it like more prescriptive, like grab the user's attention to make sure they continue to read on, like get them to express an interest. So let me see, this stage is the a customer becomes aware of the existence of a product or service. Something grabs, something grabs the user's attention. In this case, it's like an ad. Something catches or no, grab, okay, you got it. Uh, grabs the user's attention and to make them, I think we could find another definition. Uh, da, 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 da. Didn't we have it somewhere? These were our two definitions. But I can try to find some more definitions. What if I made it to something grabs the user's attention that sucks them into the top of the funnel. That sounds right. Okay. Interests. Actively expressing an interest in a product group. What is that? I don't know. And awareness. I feel like this should say when the potential customer becomes aware of the existence of a product, something grabs their attention, which sucks them into the top of the marketing funnel. Interest. When wait, the customer actively still want to call them a potential customer. Yeah. Actively expresses an interest in a or the either. We should just be consistent across them. In a product, we need to say or service if we're going to be consistent. Uh, Let's try it and see if it feels like it's too much. Because I did say at the beginning of the book that we're going to use product to mean both products and services. Then we can just use product probably. Okay. Keep it short. Okay. Um, um, okay. So when the customer, okay, um, actively expresses an interest in a product, making sure they are interested. Okay, so if we're going to continue with where we left off, something grabs our attention with, okay. Uh, so the interest stage. Uh, 
um, that I, I feel like it's like their attention uh, persists. Or here, wait, so what's happening in the stage? Like literally in terms of the landing page experiment? I guess so. Uh, I guess at this stage, my guess would be that this is when they're like clicking on the ad. They're okay. interested, they want more information. Here, let's just sketch this out. Let's say that this is, they see the ad. Let me just see if, where this works. See the ad. We're not going to keep it in there. This is where they click on the ad, right? Mm -hmm. This is where they see the landing page or product or whatever, homepage. Right. And this is where they click on the call to action, the CTA. Okay. So do you feel like that is? Yeah. All right. All right. So we need to just connect the dots between the first sentence. So when the cu potential customer becomes aware of the existence of a product, something grabs their attention, which sucks them into the top of the marketing funnel. Should we say something like an ad? I don't think so because this is like before we introduce anything about like the advertising and the landing pages. I think this should be like here are our definitions and then we can go down into okay. the ad section and the landing page section to say like you know when you're designing the ad like this is where you're trying to create that awareness that pulls people in the top of your funnel. Okay so then um, interest when the potential customer actively expresses an interest in a product. So we're keeping this. So here we know that they're clicking on an ad. Um, um, they're, so what is an ad? What? So here they go from just like looking at an ad to clicking on an ad. Mm -hmm. And so generically speaking, um, so we have their attention. Um, yeah, we just have to draw them in enough that they want to click for more information. So they, I mean, in the ad world, it would be like reading the ad, um, making sure they're interested in what you have to offer. How about they carefully, um, they're made aware that they, they, they carefully, uh, does this guy talk about it here in the context of landing pages? Let me see. Yeah, it comes from Wish Pond. So it should be in the context of landing pages. Okay, attention. I've written a, a if your visitors made it past your awesome headline, they arrive at the section where you're starting to build interest. Ask yourself what was uh So from their perspective, they said that the awareness or attention was about the headline. Like they're doing it all just the landing page. Okay. So the awareness is the headline. The interest is past the headline. Okay, so they've read, um, they, so we could say, um, they, does it solve a problem that um, they, they carefully, they now read the ad, uh, that they, they, they look closer at the, how about this? They look closer at the value prop 
or they look careful. They look, they look more carefully at the copy or images or media or something to see if it offers something of, of interest. Yeah, does that translate to clicking on the ad? Or does that, I'm just, af I'm afraid of not making a clear enough distinction between awareness and interest. Does that make sense? Um, okay, let's look at the other one. Uh, I think she, hers was good. Why, 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 why? It's so weird. Okay. Um, yeah, she's talking about using a list of benefits to generate interest. Because this is also just like using this funnel exclusively on the landing page. Okay, so how then the potential Uh, reads the uh, advertisement and I guess maybe interest is comprised not only of clicking on the ad but also like actually reading maybe the awareness is just catching that first like the image and the headline maybe the interest is reading more of the details and clicking on the ad right in our case it's clicking on the ad so for this one what if we say they they more they they carefully um it, it seems like it's this list so that to convey more on the actual offer or company relevant statement that support the message. The, it seems like the potential customer reads the offer or the ad and believes that the benefits are in line with what they want or something. God, this is hard. <laughs> it's hard to define. What does it mean to be interested? Should we work our way backwards since we can't do this one? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Let's start with, let's go to the action. What do we have? It's, um, Uh, uh huh. Uh huh. Where the heck is the art? Is the chapter here? Okay. So what did they? What did he? Or this? The first sentence is what Elmo said, right? Potentially. Or this came from Wikipedia. I think it came from Wikipedia. Where Wikipedia got it from? I don't know. This article. I'd hate to get this wrong because then it looks lame. A I D A funnel. Uh, I mean, we're not claiming that he's saying these things. We're just saying this is like a summary of the stages. Okay. Then we can, I love how they call it a framework when it's just like a, um, well, here's someone with a MBA writing about it. Oh God. Um, Oh wait, we didn't get it from Wikipedia. I don't know where we got it from because Wikipedia for interest says 
the consumer becomes interested by learning about brand benefits and how the brand fits with their lifestyle. There, put that yeah, in. There. That yeah. sounds better. And let's um, words with it. The consumer uh, becomes interested and engaged by learning about brand benefits, how the brand fits with their lifestyle, interests, and needs. This is where blog posts, videos, email marketing, other content play a major role, depending on the size and purpose. Okay, so. They just used the Wikipedia definition and added the word engaged. Yeah. And interests and needs. By learning, we want to have these words that, uh, it's weird how he goes the potential customer, then he calls him the consumer, the consumer. So, um, let's see what we have. Let me just copy this over and then see what we have. Oh boy. When the actively Should we get rid of actively? Is, wait, is this what, he, what Wikipedia had? I don't remember where this first definition came from. Let me just Google it and see. What was the Wikipedia one? The Wikipedia one is that second sentence that I just added. What about the brand benefits? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna just change. Uh, when the customer learns about right the product benefits and how it fits with their lifestyle i almost want to say and how it fits with their lifestyle or how it How might solve a problem for them or how it yeah i mean fits with their lifestyle how it how it would specifically help how might it specifically help them yeah because i like this idea of like needs like it's addressing some sort of need Yes. Okay. How it, how about it, how it addresses a need in their life, how it how might it, address a need in their life. Yes. How it might address a need in their life. Okay. I like uh, it. Ship it. So then this goes away and Do we need to say something? Um, something general, like um, they read, we might get rid of the second sentence above, up here if it's causing us issues. Yeah. We also don't have to have two sentences for each of them. Okay. Um, we should keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. So like that. I think it's okay. All right. So, uh, so we got about the, pro I think it's great. Okay. So desire, um, when you got it. Okay. When the potential customer aspires, aspires. I don't know what it means to aspire to a, I like this second part, this convert the customer from liking it to wanting it. I like it too. When the when the potential customer goes from liking the product concept to wanting it, or the product, or just leave it. 
I think we've just been saying products. I think we just leave it. Okay. Um, so we don't need this aspires to a particular brand and then creating an unquenchable desire to claim your offer. No. Is it all? Yeah, I think so. To wanting it when the potential customer takes the next step towards purchasing the chosen product. Making your, causing your user, we can have this one have, um, uh, resulting in your them taking an action action and then taking and we could lose the second sentence if we just say oh, it goes from Liking, I mean, is a desire liking? Desire you want it, it's somewhere in between. Ugh. So they already, they want the product. We need them to click on the call to action, so. Takes the next step toward purchasing the, can we get rid of chosen? Yeah. Chosen pro product uh, resulting in Um, completing a desired action. Completing a desire. Does that mean anything? Uh, I don't know. Well, resulting in them taking action. Or we get rid of all this crap and just say, and the, takes the next takes an action towards purchasing the project product. Simple. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to put these guys in the comment and get rid of them maybe. Yeah. Edit the definition and integrate these steps into the landing page. Oh, oh, yeah. So we need to bring those words down. Awareness, interest, and desire. We should get those into the ad and landing page, just like a sentence in both places. Right, I'm confused. What words? Like awareness, interest, desire, action. We should bring those back when they get into the steps on like how to create an ad and how to make a landing page. And that's just a note to us. Okay. Yeah. Stages of the AIDA marketing funnel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is actually, I think, the image too. Uh, so I think there's a front one. Well, there's going to be so many images up here. Because there's going to be two in my anecdote and this one. So it's going to be four. This is. Four. Okay. So, uh, the marketing funnel is also often referred to as, can we get one of these away is also, or is often referred to or like, often referred to or alternatively. Or sometimes, or also, what do you like? I think also. You want to get rid of often as well? Uh, I like just taking out the also. I like saying it's often referred to. Okay. It's often referred to as the customer funnel, sales funnel, purchase funnel, or conversion funnel. What you this is a weak sentence. What you want to call the, your funnel doesn't matter to me. <laughs> what matters is that you understand that it applies 
uh, to product strategy. Can we just combine these two and say whatever you want to call your funnel? The important uh, part is you understand the concept as it applies to product strategy. Yeah, that sounds great. You should be a writer. How about regardless of what you call your funnel? I understand understands, understand, how about the framework, the AID framework, as it applies to product strategy. I like that. In this chapter, we are going to focus on it, how to move people through each of these stages as part of a customer acquisition experiment. Ooh, fancy. fancy. I mean, we don't really get into that later on. We might need to remember that word too. All right. Uh, wow. That's it? Yep. All right, let's see what this We talk about consumer psychology. No. But we use the word cognitive up above, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, So then is it, or, so now we're trying to work our way into growth hacking. There was a sentence about um, that there's other I feel like we need to mention that there's many numerous other funnels based on this one or something about, you know, cause they're going to be like, what about the retention phase or something like that? Like, why aren't they talking about that? Oh, we can probably add that when we say the marketing funnel is often referred to as the customer funnel, sales funnel, purchase funnel, conversion funnel. There are also many variations on this simple funnel, but regardless of you, what you want to call it, the important part is that you get this framework, okay. something like that. All right, so, yeah. hey babe, what's up? Is this a uh, recording today too? <laughs> yeah, we're making yep. a movie about uh, <laughs> Jessica and I writing <laughs> part of our book. I see. I didn't see your bike. <gasps> no, just kidding. I, I left it um, out there because ah. I was going to try to look for, I looked for felt solid. I see. And I okay, okay. couldn't because find I, it. Yeah, because I live in, in the backyard uh, and uh, you can see it. Well, I figured we would use it anyway when we go out tonight yeah, yeah, yeah. to the um, Corona concert. Ooh. So I have one last big chance to get it before I leave Germany. Try to catch them all, you know. I know that's not funny. Okay. Um, variations. There are also many variations of funnels. Okay, I see. You see it? Okay. Um, that may, that rename stages or include other stages. Um, is it, I'm 
with different stages or uh, I like specifying that they're like added ones or renamed ones because everything that? pretty much has these with augmented stages uh, more specific to uh, wait, I know they're augmented um, that that um, get um, it, it's um, that it, it's more that that go past the customer acquisition phase. Yeah. Right, like referral mm -hmm. and retention is those stages which are on a lot of funnels are. Um, yeah, it's past customer acquisition. Yeah, that, that um, go further. Beyond. Yeah. Well, I'm now I'm going to use the, like, uh, stage twice. There are also many variations of bundles augmented with stages. We can say that go beyond customer acquisition. getting rid of augmented no the there are, there are also many variations of the funnel augmented with stages that go beyond customer acquisition what oh augmented with stages that go i'm just saying we should do yeah yeah, yeah got it. okay i can stop i think that sums it up Definitely stronger than, I don't care what you call your funnel, just know this. Um, we're going with the OG funnel. Uh, so um, regardless of what you call your funnel, <laughs> how about regardless of the funnel, um, what if we just start of what's important is that you understand. We need to say, It's not what they call it, regardless it's of- It's like, regardless of which funnel you prefer, <laughs> the important part is you need to know this. Whatever your preferred funnel is, like, please leave that at the door. We're only interested in the Ada funnel. <laughs> it's so stupid. Okay, uh, okay. so I think, uh, oh, then it says customer acquisition again. Oh yeah, cause that's how we're ending this set, this. Okay, we'll change that in a second. All right, regardless of um, I feel like uh, it's almost like what if we said um, in this chapter we are going to focus on the ADA framework. Okay, wait, hold on. Uh, in this chapter, we are going to focus on the, on the AIDA framework. As it applies to product strategy. As it, I guess. Um, as it, I don't know if I dare say, as it apply. How did you want to end the sentence? What were you thinking? I think I wanted to say. Um, we don't need to say,
I don't know what to do. What are you going for? Like how it can help us test our business ideas? How it can help us? Okay. Yeah. In our experiment. We needed to bridge us into this growth hacking thing. Oh, right. Um, and, and conversion. That, that's the words that are missing. And then we're going to focus on the We're going to focus on the ADA framework. Basic or simple? Say, so, yeah, basic. I, I'm about to say okay. suspects into customers, but we don't have to see it. And how it is. Because right now we intro for growth hacking. We basically, we introduce Sean Ellis and then we say the concept behind it is to find extremely clever, clever cost efficient ways to increase customer growth. Okay, so and how it is still relevant to new forms of marketing. In the digital world. Okay. How about that? I think that works. We already talked about customer acquisition. acquisition. Yeah. And we don't need to care about this part. No. And I don't want to talk about product strategy. Okay. I, I think that sets it up. New forms of marketing in the digital world. Boom. Growth, CD growth hackers. Wow. How do we tie this together? It's okay. Yeah, I know it takes so long. It's too hot. It's super hot. Yeah. I don't want to. You want to say anything to the LinkedIn people who might have not clicked away from the video yet? It's not right. <laughs> 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 German guy. All right. <laughs> He's so silly <laughs> and distracting. Hey, I'm so sorry. It's so okay. All right. So yeah, you go enjoy yourself because um, it's the end of his work day. Um, baby's crying. All right. So. Uh, So, um, so we have to tie this ending of like, soon you will see how Ada will tie into everything in modern marketing yeah. and then growth hacking. Okay. I feel like there needs to be, what is that stupid baby? Okay. I don't know. We got a pencil of her. Oh. This is called pregnancy boy. Well, if the baby doesn't sound pregnant, it sounds like it's post-pregnant. Okay. Um, do you think we should set up growth hacking by talking about, uh, I don't know why I don't do this in here, but I have this slide that is about um, 
I'll show you. It basically compares traditional marketing to uh, growth hacking. Yeah, which used to be called um, guerrilla marketing. Ah. Um, so let's see. It's in uh, five, five, six, and I teach it toward maybe it's in. This one is set up. Um, there it is. Awesome. Okay. Stop it. Okay. So I talk, forget about closing, uh, conversion. Should we talk about conversion or designing? Here, here's traditional marketing, okay? Mm -hmm. Too slow for rapid growth. So do we need to talk about conversion or what it means? Or do we, we, do we drop that word in this paragraph above? Let me see where's the first place we use conversion. Obviously the title, but. But it's not in the first paragraph. Or in the mar in the funny funnel paragraph. No, we have it in there. What is conversion <laughs> in our section outline? But we didn't write it. Oh, uh, okay. I, that's what we need. Yeah. Before we get to this growth hacker thing, is something. Um. To nor no need form. Um, what if we said that goes, that is still relevant to new forms of marketing For conversion in the digital world. That's or? what I was just thinking too. Uh, uh, I mean, we could. I think I want to look up AIDA and conversion, and see if they're, how they. Oh God. We can move it up farther a little bit in the sentence and say, we're going to focus on the basic AIDA framework and how it is still used to convert customers today or something like that. Okay. Um, Here's something that move a customer from awareness to the very action that leads to a conversion. I call it like a formula. Oh boy. I like this one. The ADA model, also known as the conversion funnel, is the process we use to slowly nurture prospective customers through every single touch point throughout their customer journey with the intention of eventually converting. Okay, so <laughs> is this, okay, let me place this plagiarized part here and you put yours there. Um, Um, what if we didn't say, okay, do we like this ending here relevant to new forms of marketing in the digital world? I think it's okay. I'm not heartbroken if we replace it with something else. Okay. We need something. You agree. We need something about conversion. This whole, yeah. 
change called design for conversion. Um, so. Because in this chapter, we're going to focus on using this framework to convert people. Like. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Because that sentence makes it sound like this chapter is going to be about like just like a theoretical summary of modern forms of marketing and, and discussing the relevance of this framework. You mean this sounds like that? Yeah. Well, how would how how it is relevant for designing for conversion? Relevant to designing. Yeah, get that chapter title in there. Okay. All right, that's. And now we just need to define conversion. Conversion is blah, 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 blah. Uh, Did you define conversion in the first book? I don't think so. Conversion is quite simply the process of converting Someone, something or someone, I don't know. I'm looking, I'm looking to see what other people say on the internet. From one state to another. point at which a recipient of a marketing message performs a desired action. Mm -hmm. It's so stupid. Um, is there anything in here? Converting someone from a browser to a purchaser. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the word conversion is defined as the process of changing or causing something to change from one form to another. This is not the marketing definition of conversions, but it's helpful to see how one translates to the other. Conversion in marketing is when a visitor visits your website, completes a desired goal. Okay, why don't we just say conversion in marketing is quite simply the process of I feel like it's getting repetitive, but maybe we'll move this up. The process of converting, uh, or we need to change the word. Process. Yeah, I don't think we should use converting. But I feel like if we're saying conversion in marketing, we should be more specific. Because that seems more generic, like converting from one state to another. Yeah, totally. Um, it seems like it's just getting someone to perform a desired goal. 
the process of evolving a potential customer into a real customer. I feel like that's kind of confusing though, because then if we're talking about conversions, like people clicking on the landing page, people might get confused, like, well, they didn't buy anything, so they're not a real customer, you know? Okay, let's take a step back. Is quite simply the process of getting a potential customer to complete a desired goal. That seems to be, desired goal seems to be what a lot of people are using. A desired. Or action. This could be uh, clicking on um, an email link. or by email or website. Link to reading an advertisement. Mm -hmm. to making their first purchase. I don't know. To downloading an app. Yeah. This is pretty obvious, but I'm going to say it. Users typically don't buy a product or download an app just by accident. something or someone got their attention and what was one of those sentences we killed? Which oh, one? It's touch point. We got to get this in here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise known as a touch point. Hooked um, into Am I, am I going to say funnel into a series of steps? Well, if we already introduced the funnel, I could say that someone or some, something or someone put them in. Back in the day of traditional marketing, okay, let's go to the next slide.
the touch points. Where things like print or TV or radio campaigns. Um, or worse, cold calling people on the phone or sending them direct mail that many that be that many considered to be junk mail. This form of marketing was Bob was challenging. Can we say something about how it was easy for people to like fall off the funnel or not convert or something? Yeah, in a second. It's challenging because it was slow, expensive, and What's a word that means that you didn't know because there was no analytics, you didn't know. And uh, uh, yeah, like difficult to get insights from. I'm typically challenging to measure the success of. Yeah, but we should say something other than challenging. How about, and hard to measure. That works. This form of these forms of marketing because they were slow, expensive, and how, how do we, is it clear, hard, hard to measure the success of, hard to, or hard to track? Hard to Let me try to find a word for that. Uh, risky they were hard to assess evaluate appraise analyze Let's just say hard to measure and that and fix it later. Okay. I want to say how to measure the effectiveness of, but how to measure effectively. They were hard to measure effectively. So you could measure them, but only but well, not very effectively. So if, if an ad played on, okay, you wouldn't know, if an ad was in a newspaper, you might know how many of those newspapers were sold, but you won't know exactly how many people saw the ad. Yeah. Or if an ad was on the radio, you wouldn't know 
um, if they heard it or if they were talking to their friend. Right, I know what you mean. Wouldn't know what brought them ultimately in the in the in the store to make the purchase. Mm -hmm. So it could be in lack. A means uh, a lack of way to act a lack a, w a way to measure the effectiveness of let's just fucking just keep going I'll also use engagement if you want to use it again lack a way to measure engagement we could just yeah how about that Thank you. Customer engagement. Or just engagement. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, um, Um, this is Do you want to bring in digital marketing now? Digital marketing. Did we lose that place where I said now there are new forms of digital marketing? Yeah. We locked, so I can say it here. Yeah. Now there are new forms of digital marketing and numerous buzzwords or terms. Where, uh, yeah, yeah. Where are you going with sentence? Yeah, the, and, and numerous terms that describe both the theory and the tactics. Okay. We could also like play off the fact that like traditional marketing is slow, expensive, lacked way to measure engagement. We can follow that up with like, this is, cause that's like exactly why digital marketing has like exploded and taken off and spun off all these other terms and trends. Exactly. Now there are new forms and numerous terms at this. Okay. Uh, this is where we should be saying that, you know, now Facebook, you know. You I think know. we should respond specifically to the slow, expensive, lack of way to measure engagement. So we should say something about, give an example or say something about how, like, it's incredibly fast. Right. It's cheap. And we can track stuff really easily. Okay. Okay. New forms of, Okay marketing that are fast well i don't think we literally need to say like they're fast expensive i think we should say it like following that first sentence you wrote give an example of how fast and cheap it is like you can say you now you can in 24 hours, you can spend $5 and learn more about your audience than you ever would have from, you know, a two week print ad. You can learn more about in 24 hours with a $5, because we're setting this up for later. Yeah. Um, online ad campaign, you can learn more about your customer segment. Yeah, you knew it. Potential customer segment or target customer segment. 
target customer segment, yeah. Then you could twenty five years ago, when did Facebook start or online advertising or in nineties? Then you I was could. just thinking you would say like then you could with a something a, a, a week long radio ad or something like that. Give like another specific, okay. or then with. Uh, 30 or we could be generic and say like, or with a, a week long five thousand dollar campaign twenty years ago or something like that. A week long. $5,000 ad buy in a, pr in a print newspaper period. Yeah, unless you want to give like a year in 1990 or 25 years ago or something like that. We can well, also just end it. Well, isn't it the same now? Possibly, potentially. I have no idea now what they, like what you can, yeah, I guess it's still, you still don't know who's seeing the paper and stuff like that. I imagine they have like better analytics now than they did then because they didn't have to compete with the likes of Facebook and things. Right. And now you probably have to sign up for an online account and input your age and your gender and all that other stuff. Because the, even the newspaper wants to keep track of you. So this start with, okay, now there are new forms of uh, digital marketing. And um, I, I, I don't, I'm going to save this. Yeah. Um, that are accessible to everybody. To everyone or to product makers? Everybody, everyone, yeah. 24 hours, with the, you can learn more about your target customer segment than you could, well, accessible to everyone except for the people in China. Well, yeah. The, have their own newspapers. In 24 hours with a $5 online app, you can learn more about your target. than you could before. How about that? Okay. With a week long $5,000 ad buy in a print newspaper. Okay. Um, uh, All right, so here's kind of like, we don't need to get into this stuff, but it, it's a whole, it's around rapid growth. So, um, I think we need to get the word growth in here. Mm -hmm. Can we say, like, can we give another specific, like, you can tweak and adjust your, your product or your campaign to grow your audience or something like that? Grow your user base. Yeah. Because that's also a benefit of digital marketing, is you can just, like, make a bunch of small tweaks to things and run them at the same time and run to different audiences and whatever else you want. Keep right. tweaking things. Not iterate. 
you can iterate and split test. Um, in running, I dare say, we need we structured experiments. Uh, I know this is, I'm just going to throw a bunch of words in here. Stru structured experiments to see to uh, accelerate growth I hope that's true. Okay, using um, instead of Excelor, okay, uh, to rapidly. Acquire, we're bringing back, uh, acquire customers. All tracking. I get the word growth in there. I need to accelerate growth. Um, I know, but that, but then using structured experiments to accelerate. These are two different things. What if we say you can quickly iterate and split test to accelerate growth? Get rid of experiments? Yeah, I think we use this structured experiments too many times already. To accelerate Product growth period. Yeah, because I feel like rapidly acquiring new customers is part of that accelerating product growth. Wait, hold on and split test. Not only your marketing campaign How about that? I mean, it needs to be tweaked, but the point is that it ends on growth, so now we can introduce growth hacking. Yeah. I'm confused why we're saying not only your marketing campaign, but also your funnel. But I'm taking it beyond the ad now. It's not just the ad, because growth hacking also talks about the doing stuff inside your product. Yeah, I feel like the product funnel, like we should swap that for something like, but also okay. your yeah, hold on. product itself. Experience. Yeah. How's that? Wait, product experience. happy 
You can quickly iterate and split test your marketing campaign and product experience for conversion and growth. Yeah, I miss the word accelerate, but other than that, I like it. Okay, do you want me to change it back to, to, to accelerate? But How about to improve conversion and accelerate growth? You know that. That's, uh, that's sick. Can I kill this numerous terms to describe both theory and tactics? Let go of it, let go. There are numerous terms that describe both the theory and tactics that will make your head spin. So let's jump in now. Okay. Um, I know we're going to change that. Okay. 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 Ah, but then we can just begin with growth hacking as a term. Yeah. Except I think we do. We want to say by Sean Ellis marketing. Uh, Well, now he's not just a marketing blogger, but he's the author of my a marketing blogger, entrepreneur, and author of Hacking Growth. What if we just made, or should we just sub one of these out with author of Hacking Growth? Well, I, I don't know if he's still. Let's see if he how what it says about him on Wikipedia now. Um, are you looking it up? Yeah. I met this guy. He likes to drink. An entrepreneur, angel investor, and startup advisor. Oh, my God. And a basketball player. Well. And a British film director. Okay. Um, there it is. Uh, entrepreneur, angel investor, and startup Well, he hasn't updated this for a long time. His, he's not really growth hacking uh, Wikipedia. He hasn't updated this shit since 2014. He doesn't care. Okay. Let's see what he has on his website. He's an entrepreneur and the author of a book called Growth Hacking. He calls himself author, he calls himself author podcast host, keynote speaker, workshops. He's the host of Breakout Growth Podcast, author of Hacking Growth, keynote speaker, and runs workshops around the world to implement a cross-functional approach to growth he calls growth hacking, a term he coined in 2010. Well, that's exciting. Um, let's see. Let's just say... Can we just say author and entrepreneur? Yeah. Do you want to put the name of his book in too still? Because we can say author of hacking growth. It just sounds so boring to say growth hacking is a term coined by 2010 by Sean Ellis. An entrepreneur and author of hacking growth. Let's just do it. Okay. An entrepreneur and the author. We have an asterisk there, but we don't have like a footnote for it. I did. It's somewhere below here. Like, oh, we killed it. We lost it somewhere. Yeah. Um, we'll fix it later. Um, can I just link it, do it to the Wikipedia page? 
or let's see. Uh, it should be his book. Or are you, or is the, the references him coining it in 2010? Let's see. Okay, I'll do his book. Well, I, I just don't feel like doing the citation. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, it's the definitive playbook by the pioneers of growth hacking, one of the hottest methodologies in Silicon Valley. Um, what do you want to do? Um, I found, oh, geez. here's his blog where he defined the word growth hacking for the first time or used the word growth hacking for the first time. Okay. Do you want to make that the star insert footnote? Yeah. Okay. You have it. You just go insert, but good one. Okay. Yeah, before the footnote was just the Wikipedia page for growth hacking. So I think that's fine. Okay, so. Um, let's see, this book. Finding growth solutions that used to be responsible, data teams responsible, and markers. Uh -huh. and like it's all the usual stuff like near yell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Eric Rees, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Patrick, who did the Lean Entrepreneur. Uh, so, um, What's the big idea? Let's see, because I wrote that a long time ago when it was very new. Um, and crossing their fingers, growth hacking. What if I just took this whole thing? As the, as the Amazon description says, I like this line here. Okay, what should we do? Are you looking for like his definition of growth hacking? It's for product teams. Okay, I'm just beeping this up. The concept behind it is for cross functional product teams to not come up with, experiment with. Yeah. With extremely clever, I don't know, with. I like clever. Clever, cost efficient ways to increase customer growth. 
Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Airbnb are companies that have all used growth hacking to become successful. Hard care growth hackers are a crossbreed of marketers, coders, and analytic experts. They are masters in traffic and SEO, the deep understanding of the innards of SEO, ad platforms, and social media tools. They are called hackers because they are reasonably focused on growing the business by any means necessary. They push the limits of traditional marketing using techniques such as A-B tests, landing pages, viral factors, email deliverability, and social media in integration. The goal of growth hacking is to tie viral and paid campaigns to user engagement metrics so that you can identify the most valuable marketing channels. I feel like saying that's one of the goals or a primary goal is to tie viral and paid ad campaigns to engage user engagement metrics so that you can identify the most valuable marketing channels. Growth hacking entails continuous tinkering with the products It's now marketing and user experience so that it is fully optimized for acquiring and getting them more deeply engaged. Mm -hmm. How's that? I still like it. Sounds okay. great. Be. Um, what is this bullshit? Oh, this was all more of that bullshit. Do we need more bullshit about growth hacking? I don't think so. Because this section is really like, here are some other fun spin-off terms. Okay, let me just look at this and see if there's anything we want. Uh, out of the box solutions. We could say clever out of the box. No. No, I don't know what that means. I mean, okay. I do, but like in this context. We, we talk about data analytics, rigorous empirical scientific approach. We say they are experimenting. They're masters. We're finding the product experience, rigorous decoding user motivations to inspire funnel optimization. behavior, decoding users' motivations to inspire and create viral growth. Do we have enough of that in there? I think so. Fine. Growth hacking uh, started What is this? <laughs> I think this was our attempt when we had like the growth design and the <clears throat> hooked model as like a separate section that was our attempt at like we'll put some kind of intro like this okay so but now, now it's all one section works or terms there are uh, uh since the coin was turned since the term was joined <laughs> that too uh, since the term was coined there has been a a rapid growth of many growth hacking frameworks. <laughs> An explosion of yes. growth hacking frameworks. Or uh, growth marketing. Okay. Or growth related. Our growth inspired, I don't know. We don't need to say an increasingly popular one. That's just my attempt at saying something besides like, such as growth design. Um, Are we going to talk about growth design before 
hooked, I guess so. I think so. Let's okay. try it. We can always swap them around. There's been an explosion of growth related frameworks. that are relevant to both uh, either marketing or product strategy and product design. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was like. Okay, let's just plop in our Lex Roman's de definition. Mm -hmm. um, Lex Roman, who is a top growth design expert, or not a top, a growth design expert. It as all right. Where where does what's her thing? Yeah, let me find it. What is growth design? There's what she has on her site. How about like that? Lex Roman, who is a growth design expert, describes it as designers practicing growth, focusing not only on customer experience, but also on how to drive sustainable business growth by finding the levers to unlock loops of customer and business value. That's like a cut from the beginning and the end of her definition. This is the original quote. Okay. Um.
Um, we can maybe cut out this designers practicing growth. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What, what is this how to new topic? So that was, this is what it originally said on how to deliver business impact. And then it would just like end there. We can either use that or what she had at the end, which is how to drive sustainable business growth by finding the levers to unlock loops of customer and business value. Yeah, go ahead and put, put it back how it was. What if we got rid of that and just sent it to her and said approve? Yeah, that works. We'll do that later. Okay, so um, should I just go ahead and footnote this quote by putting a little star? Yeah, I'll grab the... I got it. Hold on. Let me just put this thing there for now. No, it's not. It's like... Yeah, it's here. Okay. Oh, hey. Okay. Okay, great. Another framework is called the hook model. Um, oh, I was just reading about this kind of uh, fog something, DJ Stanford is mm, BJ Fog, a weird name like that. The hook framework connects your solution to the user's problem and form a habit. It consists of four components, trigger, action, reward, and investment. And then we could just have a picture of it. And then just put that image in there. So let me just put it there. Here's also, I'll paste this below. Here's his, uh, what he has on his site about the hook model. Okay, yeah, use what he has. And then let's link to his site, the, the footnote, and then, um, you could just put this image in there that then I'll have them redraw. Okay. Um, I think people will appreciate seeing all this stuff contextualized. All right. Um, I wonder if we need to. Can that was 
Does he talk about, oh shit. Let's see. BJ Fogg, social scientist. So, He was a student of B.J. Fogg. Mm. An expert, he directs the Persuasive Technology Lab. At I was the first to study how human behavior do digital interfaces. Just wanted to set the record straight. That's correct. Um, so, I might be going too far down into the weeds by talking about him, but um, I feel that Nier shouldn't get, or wouldn't even want 100% credit. It's called, I hope, is it the hooked, is it called the hook model? Yeah, hook model. This case, Not hooked, um, hook. the hook model. Um, social, how do I do this? Social scientists I don't know if DJ Fogg invented the hook model or Near did. He he did something else. I I feel like. Um, oh brother. The hook model. Oh, no. He had a behavioral model. Yeah, according to product plan, Near Invent developed the hook model. After, okay, why don't we say, uh, we need to talk about, this is the thing that Fogg did. I, I, you might remember from the video. Yeah. Um, Maybe we don't need to talk about that, though. Okay. This sentence needs some serious fixing. Yeah. Uh, um, put forth 
by near, oopsie, near yell is called the hook model. In his book, Hooked, he describes I think that works. Okay. Um, I think this is nice. It's getting somewhere. Um, What does it say up there for components? Components. I can only. And here we called it a four step process. This is Arial 9 normal text. Arial 9 normal text. Uh, Wow, we. Oh, my God. What does all this shit have to do with landing pages? <laughs> yeah. The funnel. Well, maybe this stuff. <laughs> Uh, as much as I don't want to say, maybe this stuff belongs in a sidebar. Kind of like the buzzword sidebar. Yeah. Um, we could have a sidebar here about these terms and then still have a mobility sidebar, but move the reference to it down to when we introduce VW. Just so they're not like back to back sidebars. No oh, way, no way. Wait, hold on. No, it's 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 fine. Um we're just giving we're we're gonna I'm just I'm gonna dial it back in a second. You're gonna see. Uh so this thing is not so much about growth hacking, it's just it's about we need to dial it back, by the way, to conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, like this paragraph needs to bridge back to starting at the top of the funnel um, to make customers aware. Um, and then this is like, yeah, what do we call that now? It's so it's about growth hacking, growth design, and The growth of growth. 
that's kind of fun. Um, we'll come back to it. Did we talk about that it's behavior, it gets back to behavior? Mm. What if we said in... Not really. We, we mentioned behavior. We're talking about the hook model. So it's to subtly encourage customer behavior. We talk about it here though, I think. Like a funnel is, I mean, um, Cognitive, that's it. Ah. Can you look up cognitive behavior and tell me what it is? Comes up with cognitive behavioral therapy. Let's throw some quotes oh, around this. Great. Yeah. Cognitive behavior. Just cognitive behavior theory or therapy. Well, so I don't think we should use them together. Okay. Um, how about customer behavior? When hooking customers? I don't know. Let's just do this for now. Okay. Okay. We already did this. This is done. Yep. How do you make it go away? Gone. Yippee. Okay. So now we have a bunch more shit. <sighs> Fun with funnels. Okay. Did we, we talk about customer acquisition and we were, this is done. What is growth hacking? Okay. I feel like this should go reading and advertisement first because that's the oldest school. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. Oh, you are talking about reading and advertisement is a conversion. I thought you were saying click on the email, read the advertisement. I'm confused by this sentence now. Uh, Getting a potential customer complete. Uh, these all could be separate desired goals or part of one funnel. But if you want to make it the process, getting them to complete, this could be. I mean, I guess I see how the second two, like clicking on an email or website link and downloading an app are like desired goals for conversion, but I don't understand how reading an advertisement Okay, I was trying to talk about the steps, um, but this could be um, clicking on Aren't we talking about traditional marketing here? No, not yet. It's under this that we say back in the day of traditional marketing. Now there are new forms of digital marketing. Well, that's why I wanted to kind of have them both. This could be uh, if you see an ad, uh, 
Yeah, what's the goal if somebody sees the ad? Going to a store. Um, this could be buying a product because by based on the it could goal. be calling in to order a product after you saw a commercial on TV. I, I don't like hook them, but you like that? Got them hooked or hook them in or? I don't think we need to say hooked. I like hooked, it's setting up hooked. Otherwise known as a touch point initially hooked them. Users typically don't buy a product or download an app. Um, don't just, I, I think I'm trying to say users typically don't uh, buy a product or download an app they have never heard of, they, didn't, they know nothing about. Someone or something, that's the something, otherwise known as a touch point, hook them into a, bring it back to, what do we call it? A marketing funnel. Right? Okay. Yeah. Back in the day of traditional marketing, the touch points were things like print or, or TV or radio campaigns or worse, cold calling people on the phone or, or sending them, or worse, salespeople having to cold call people on their, app, on their home phone numbers. <laughs> I don't know. That feels very specific now. Well, well that's what it was like. Call, call yeah. people on their home. Having, or worse, salespeople having to cold call people during dinner. Right? Okay. Or sending them direct mail that many considered to be junk mail. These forms of marketing were challenging because they were slow, expensive, and lacked a way to measure engagement. Now there are new forms of digital marketing that are easily accessible. In 24 hours with a $5 online acumen, you can learn about your target customer segment, learn more about than you could before, could before, could in the past, Yeah, in the past, maybe. Sounds better. Where does that go?
I mean, it might be still true. Yeah. I think it's just hard to, like, we don't know if that's true now. I think so. I, you certainly could learn more about your target customer segment's interest. in your product than you could after running a week long, you know, I, I you know what I mean? Ugh. Like you want to just make this say interest? Yeah. In your product? I, I think it's fine like this. In 24 hours with a $5 online ad campaign, you can learn more about your target customer segments interests than you could with a week long $5,000 ad buy in a print newspaper. Okay, should this say that are easy accessible to uh, to product makers or? Sure, I think that works. It's not just their interest, it's their uh, interest in the product. But I feel like if you're being, like if you're saying their interest in the product, I guess I just don't know how much you can learn from a newspaper. Like I feel like you could still learn about people's interest. Well, you can. Based on if they're bringing in your, your newspaper ad or whatever they need to do. Okay, what about in 24 hours with a $5 that you can learn more? You can learn if your target customers, target customer segment is interested in your value prop than you could with a week long $5,000 ad buy. I don't know, I guess. Originally, I was thinking that we were making the case that like, you can do more now with five bucks in 24 hours than you could 10 or 20 years ago with $5,000 in a print newspaper. Like I was trying to make the comparison of like, how quick and easy it is to do things now but compared you, to it was then. But I think you're trying to make the point that digital marketing is this much better than traditional marketing. Right. You can still run a $5,000 ad buy in New York Times print. Yeah, but I don't know how much you learn from that now compared to before because everybody's collecting all your information now. Yeah, but you don't know. If it's a print, you don't know if they saw it, the ad, right? Yeah. Like, this is the newspaper here. I, you know, maybe I saw this or maybe I didn't see the ad, but with Facebook, you know if the ad was in front of their face. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe we go back to just saying you learn more about your target customer segment than you could with a week long ad by a different newspaper. Make what bold you, claims, why not? Well, what are you, okay, but what are you learning about the segment? We're trying to learn, uh, we're not trying to learn about the segment, we're trying to learn about, we're trying to sell product. What right. about? But you can learn about their interests in your product, but you can also learn about like, what like age ranges and genders and stuff like that that are clicking on the thing most or viewing it most i know but i want to see um i mean that gets into the business model but i guess i want to touch on the value prop because we're going into value prop testing all the way all okay i, I mean like
I think that works. In 24 hours of the $5 online ad campaign, you can learn more about your target customer's reaction to your value proposition than you could with a week-long $5,000 print campaign in a newspaper. Great. You can also quickly iterate and split test your marketing campaign and product experience to improve conversion and accelerate growth. There are new, what if we just add tack this on there? There are numerous terms that's, that describe both that. What is the theory and the tactics? What is that describing? Well, it's not, the, the, the tactics are the techniques. So for UX strategy, the theory is my, the four spinning plates and the, te, and the techniques are landing page testing, you know? Right, right. No, I know what theory and tactics are. I mean, like what, are we saying they're like the theory and tactics behind digital marketing? Is it like, because we're talking about digital marketing and how great it is. And then we just say there's numerous terms to describe both theory and tactics. Okay, let's fix it. There are numerous terms. Um, I, I'm trying to set up the sentence here. That, okay, there are numerous frameworks or models and job titles. I feel like it's more important for us to say something about like what these terms are about. Like instead of saying generally they're about like theory and frameworks, saying that it's about like it's these it's things beyond just customer acquisition. It's it's about retaining customers. It's that whatever like we just said, accelerating growth. I don't know. Because we're saying, because we, we purposely tried to end on accelerate growth. We could say something like there's, you know, whole emerging fields dedicated to just the subject of how to improve these, these numbers. Something, there are numerous somethings that What do they do? There are numerous terms and frameworks um, that you can be aware of that attempt to describe it, that attempt that, uh, that. I feel like we should say something about what they have in common. Like they're, that's, like what I was trying to say about going beyond customer acquisition or being about retention or about, um, you know, focusing exclusively on like those metrics or we should make some kind of claim because having a sentence that just says there are lots of terms <laughs> is like a lame sentence. That focus on this concept, that focus on this process. What process? That, okay, what were we saying? Okay, you can quickly iterate and test your market and product to improve conversion and accelerate growth. That have shit to do with growth.
numerous terms and frameworks that I mean, do they always fall under the umbrella of as customer, it's really that behave as customer behavior. Became something that could be uh, exploited. Well, I think that's what we're already doing about the, when we're talking about the funnel, the funnel is already exploiting customer behavior. Uh -huh, come on. The only thing that's significant about these terms and why they go together is that they're there. about like, because growth hacking and growth design are like zooming into some piece of the funnel and trying to tweak it until it's really successful at converting people effectively. They do it in different ways, but, and the hook model is about retaining customers and forming a habit so they keep coming back. Oh, you're so smart. Okay. So, but I've evolved. Okay, fine. That we have that word, that touch on that. Focus on growth. How about experimenting with aspects of the funnel? From the wait, that, that focus on growth from It was like something I in this thing that focus on growth using data. I'm trying, I want to move, there are numerous terms and frameworks that use data to predict and control online customer behavior to <laughs> accelerate growth. <laughs> um, they grow. What if we say there's numerous growth terms and frameworks. Yeah, uh, growth. Are they? Uh, growth terms is hook, what's hook model? And models? It's a process to subtly encourage customer behavior and create habits. But I would say that's still for growth.
I think that makes way more sense. Thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Wow, I think it's enough bullshit and that next week we can work on the mobility thing. I think so. We just need, oh, we still need to write this okay. paragraph bringing it back to, uh, and look at the intro, but we need to write the paragraph that needs to bridge back to starting at the top of the funnel to make customers aware under the hook model. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You should have stayed now. You just keep pushing and pushing. It's going to uh, happen. I know. We just need to do, we need to do the intro. We need to do that paragraph and the mobility sidebar. Can you imagine? That's and then, it. And then this chapter will be done. Yay. <laughs> uh, Chrissy tested out or something. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, I think this one needs to do some heavy lifting. Um, top of the funnel to make customers aware. Um, business concepts again and um, I think it'll come together. It's better than the old chapter nine. I think it's pretty strong. But yeah, just that paragraph, sprinkle in some more Ada stuff through the steps and then check out that intro and the mobility. And that's it. Woo. Hooray, a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I know. Um, and we have to get people to test it. Yeah, there's that and review it, but you know, the yeah. hardest part is the first pass. Yeah. And we get feedback from VW. It's going to be good. It's solid. Um, yeah. so as far as let's see the next time we meet is looks like next Thursday at yeah. noon Pacific time. Okay. Does that work for you? Yep. Are you going to be bored? I mean, I'm not doing anything the next couple of days, but I thought I would just enjoy Berlin or something. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe, maybe, you know, soak it up while you're there for your last few days. Yeah, why not? Uh, we don't need to work. No, I think it's fine. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you in Berlin. It's been great. <laughs> I'll miss having your, your saxophonist and babies outside, but you know. Me too. All, All right. right. Well, travel safe. Thank you. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.